Nice, Rick. Yes! What do you know? Yes, oh my yes, God. Yes, buddy. That is so fantastic. Oh, was that spectacular. Holy smokers, flip, it's a bonefish. That's okay, we don't need the tool, but we did like the fish. That was good enough that was, for me. No, buddy. that was good enough, yeah. That was good enough for me. Rick, that was a beautiful cast. Oh, what a I mean, bite. I mean, you just laid it right up there on the table, and he just said, okay. That was Florida fishing right yeah, there, wasn't it? I know, I know. This is, wow. This is like going home, but with mountains. Flipping. I don't care who you are. This is special. Is your heart like bumpy? It is, it is. Oh, my it is. I'm surprised you can't hear it from over yonder. You know, I expect to see Lewis and Clark just popping over the hill here any second. The aura of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark still lingers over these waters. 200 years ago, those men led their corps of discovery through the valley of the Big Hole River and would recognize it still today. Now I'm bound for a prime angling location named for one of the great explorers, Meriwether Ranch near the town of Melrose in Montana's Silver Bow Country, and more importantly, right on the Big Hole River itself with an estimated 3,000 trout per river mile. The Big Hole River is probably the quintessential blue ribbon trout stream in the state of Montana. We get people from all walks of life, all around the world, come to Melrose to fish the Big Hole River. It has canyons, it has prairie, big rolly valleys that open up into huge vistas, very tight canyons, fast bouldery runs. The Big Hole, one of the last of the few, rises out of Skinner Lake in Montana's Beaverhead Mountains. Over 150 undammed, untamed miles along a serpentine course to the Jefferson, a tributary of the mighty Missouri. And don't forget the cool thing in here, there's grayling here, there's brook trout here, there's cutthroat here, there's rainbows, browns, white fish. That's as good as it gets. If only the scenery were a little nicer. Yeah, yeah, we hate that too. It's one of the only rivers in North America with a native population that has never been replanted of grayling. Let's go fishing. Oh, George, come on. I thought we'd just sit here and yak about it. That's a spruce moth. That is what these fish are feeding pretty heavily on. The spruce moths, when they hit the water, they get wet and they can't get out of the water. They struggle quite a bit going down. And the, so the fish are very active in taking them. And what happens is, when these moths are really struggling on the surface, you can fish a dry fly almost like a popper and just twitch, twitch, twitch it across the surface. And fish that won't take a dead drift will blast, blast a, they get excited. a twitched yeah. fly. And it's really fun because it makes it very simple. There he goes. What do you know? That was beautiful. That's a nice fish, and you know, could you have a prettier setup than that? Looks like a male. Beautiful brown. Now it's really interesting. Some of these browns will have a million spots like this, and other browns here will have 50 instead of 300 mm -hmm. spots like that. They're very different in their coloration, but they're sure camoed. Okay, big boy. That was nice. Leaving the big water of the big hole for a small meadow stream, we escape the maddening crowds and get to revive the technical skills of precision fly fishing. This is angling with a sense of discovery that Lewis and Clark felt in this same country and on this same water. Ooh, ooh, ooh this is a good one for you. Ooh, yeah. Okay. We'll see how we can miss here, George. No. Nope. George, now you deserve the bite on that. There he is. All right, what is it, George? Oh, that is gorgeous, isn't it? For this water? Yeah. What beautiful. a gorgeous brown. George, where was he? Right on the bend? Right in the water. Oh, in the water? No kidding. Yeah. You don't see that every day. No. Right, right in the, the water. I got to use that when I get home. <laughs> we fish together and alternate holes. We'll take a shot, catch a fish, switch anglers. And going with George, he knows all these little great sweet spots around this area. You know, adding him to the mix and watching him fish this, he's fished this area since he was a boy. Who's next? <laughs> it's Flip. Well, hello. What a fish! What a deal! What a fish! I asked you who was next. <laughs> 
Oh, what a oh. cow for this crick. George, that was beautiful. Now look how few spots they have on that. They're all different. He's smoking us. You notice that? <laughs> the old catch the little guys. And the native son is catching hey, the big one. Hey, Spader. what's going on here? Yeah. I don't know. We're standing here and he's standing there. There's the difference. <laughs> yeah, I asked you guys a lot of fish. Goody Creek. I knew it. It's so fun to fish with these guys because we're learning stories, we're learning techniques, and we get to have fun with each other when we make a bad cast, most importantly. Flip, I've got a really good pool here, so while I let that rest, I'm just going to do a little dabbing. Go, girl. Boy, there's got to be somebody big in this house. Oh, there he is. Wow. Oh, the what? whale of Goody Creek. Look at this guy. Now, how I'm going to land him, I can't begin to tell you, but. How deep is it? If my hat <laughs> floats off, George, it was really deep. Let me grab the hat. Yeah, at least get my hat, will you? Oh. How's that? Look at the white on that pen. Go back there and tell your friends how wonderful that was. I mean, how fun is this? <laughs> We're in the right place. This is pretty delightful fishing. Anybody that can't enjoy this oh. is here for the wrong reason. I'm going to use a, uh, a really light colored Royal Wolf big and hope that those little bitty fish don't eat it and all you guys catch the little ones. And I'm going to catch the big ones with this big wolf. Small water calls for large technical skills. Longer leaders, pinpoint casting, perfect presentation, sure strikes. All this is what's best about an unforgiving small stream, as opposed to broad rivers. That's a 22-incher. That was beautiful. And a dandy, too. Look at this fish. Yeah. Something's wrong with them. High nitrogen levels, sometimes they get that swelling around their eyes. I don't know why, you know, I should love big rivers. I should love great big rivers you with do love big rivers. hundreds of boats. It's time to love from... a little river. It's, it's time a... to love a little river. Glad to hear we you We will say get that. to the big hole. We are in the little hole. All right, you're up, kids. Who's up, George? Look at here. Look at here. Look what? at here. Say what? George. What? what were you... I didn't even know you were making a cast. Flip and I were just <laughs> dabbing <laughs> away. Is it big? It's a big dang brown trout. I mean, it's a huge brown trout for this creek. It's probably 16, 17 inches. George, I want to be a native son. I didn't even know he cast. I thought, oh, geez, I got a duck. I went, what was that? I didn't even know he cast at that fish. Where was I? Talking you to were, you. You were. Well, there's a shock. Yeah. George Goody, native son, Big Hole Valley. Rick and I used to fish the Florida flats stretching between horizons and 100-pound tarpon in airborne silver arcs. And here we are savoring the pleasures of 10-foot cricks and 20-inch trout. Yeah, I tell you what, I love fishing stuff like this. And this is fun. like the most intimate. You know nobody was here before you. You know nobody may not fish here in another month or a year. And it's beautiful. Thanks for the day, guys. You bet, John. Thank you, Flip. Thank you.